Hello everyone, I'm Yiming from Tsinghua University. I'm going to present our work, a unified architecture for accelerating distributed DNN training in heterogeneous GPU and CPU clusters. This is a joint work with Bidance. Deep neural network has evolved rapidly in recent years. We have seen numerous emerging DNN models such as ResNet, BERT, and GPT-3, and they have brought fundamental improvements for applications such as computer vision and natural language processing. On the other hand, training these DNN models is time consuming since they have large number of parameters that need to be trained. For example, to train a BERT large model on one Tesla V100 GPU, the estimated time to converge is about 78 days. So in practice, we need distributed training to scale out. A common way for distributed training is called data parallelism, which means that each GPU carries a complete model and loads different data to train. Here is an example using two GPUs for data parallelism. First, each GPU takes different input data and goes through the forward propagation to get the output. Then in the back propagation, then calculate the loss function and propagates the gradients from the last layer to the first layer. After that, each GPU communicates with others to aggregate the gradients and use the new gradients to update their parameters and then go to the next iteration to repeat these processes. And in this work, we will cover the communication stage and the parameter update stage and discuss how to accelerate them in practice. There are two architectures based on data parallelism, all reduce and PS. For all reduce, all workers are homogeneous and they use collective communication to exchange the gradients with each other. For parameter server, the architecture is a heterogeneous bipartite graph where the GPU workers and CPU servers connect with each other. In the communication stage, the GPU workers push their gradients to the CPU server and then push the latest parameters back. Unfortunately, we find that existing solutions are insufficient. This figure shows the performance of state-of-the-art all reduce and PS when training the VGG16 with 32 GPUs. We find that even with the optimizations from by scheduler, they are still far from optimal. So our question is, what are the problems of existing solutions? Problem one is the suboptimal intermachine communication. We focus on DNN training in heterogeneous clusters with GPUs and CPUs, but all reduce MPS fail to leverage the heterogeneous resources efficiently. For example, if we use all reduce for training, you cannot leverage CPU machines because it is a homogeneous architecture. As shown in this figure, no matter how much the number of CPU machines change, the all reduce plot is always flat. Then if we use PS, it may create traffic hotspot if there are insufficient CPU machines and the application throughput is very low. So we find that existing solutions fail to address the characteristics of heterogeneous clusters. Problem two is the suboptimal intramachine communication. In practice, there are often multiple GPUs in a GPU machine, and the internal topology is also a network with different link bandwidths. Interestingly, we observed that the next bandwidth is now close to the PCIe bandwidth in recent years. Compared to the past when the NIC is the only bottleneck, now the PCIe can also be the bottleneck. But current intermachine solutions do not timely address this problem, and they will cause PCIe contention, which prevents the NIC from saturating NIC's maximum bandwidth. This motivates us to consider the intermachine topology carefully. Problem three is the CPU bottleneck. This is a motivating example of the PS architecture. When GPU workers send the gradients to the CPU server, the server first aggregate the gradients and then update the parameters using the optimizer function. As a typical setup in modern DNN training clusters, 
we use 100 gigabits gradient flow as the input, and the CPU server uses the six-channel DDR4 memory, which is also used in NVIDIA DGX2. Then we can calculate the maximum number of memory assets to process the gradient flow is about 10 times. But in fact, many popular optimizers, including IMS Pro and Atom, require memory assets much more than 10 times. This indicates that the CPU can be a bottleneck for running the optimizers. For example, if we run IMS probe on CPUs, then the throughput is lower than the network rate. So our question is how to address the CPU bottleneck. To briefly summarize, we have discussed three problems, the inter-machine and intra-machine communication performance and the CPU bottleneck. In this work, we propose our solution called BIPS that can address all these three problems. First, it introduces an optimal intermachine communication strategy that is generic and can unify all reduce and PS. Second, it has intermachine optimization that can accelerate the communication inside GPU machines with diverse topology. And finally, it introduces a new abstraction called summation service that can aggregate the gradients on CPUs and move the parameter update to GPUs. The summation service can address the CPU bottleneck efficiently. Next, we will move on to the design and implementation. We first introduce the design goal. We focus on homo uh, heterogeneous clusters with GPU and CPU machines. In practice, we have some interesting findings. This is a three month trace collected from an internal cluster of bytons. And we find that the average CPU utilization is only about 20 to 35%. And there are about 20 to 45% GPU machines that only run non-distributed jobs, meaning their bandwidth is unused. So an op a new opportunity is that there are spare CPUs and bandwidth in heterogeneous clusters. And our design goal is to leverage any of these spare resources. Then we start from the intermachine communication. As mentioned before, PS only uses the links between GPU and CPU machines. If there are insufficient CPU machines, then the bandwidth of GPU machines is not fully utilized. On the other hand, all reduce only uses links between GPU machines, so the CPU bandwidth is not uh, used at all. So the best strategy is to combine them together. That can leverage the bandwidth of, of all machines and also utilize the CPU resources. In this example, we not only enable the connection between GPU and CPU machines, but also enable the connection between GPU machines like all reduce. But since we combine these strategies together, we need to determine how to partition the link workload. To solve this problem, we use X and Y to represent the amount of traffic for the two combined strategies respectively. And after some modeling, we've calculated the optimal X and Y as these two equations, where N represents the number of GPU machines and K represents the number of CPU machines. In theory, this strategy can achieve minimal communication time. And here, we use an example to show how it performs. This figure shows the communication time of three strategies, including PS, all reduce, and the optimal one. And we have three findings. First, if K is zero, then the optimal value is equal to all reduce. When K is N, the optimal time is equal to PS. And when K is be between zero and N, it is better than all reduce and PS. So this strategy can unify PS and all reduce and is optimal with any number of CPU machines. Um, next, we move on to the intramachine communication. We use this topology with eight GPUs as an example, since it is widely used. In this topology, there are multiple links with different bandwidths. And we find that this bottleneck is the uh, link between the CPU and PCIe switch. Our goal is to minimize the traffic on this link. However, current solutions such as MPI or NICO choose to perform all reduce for all these eight GPUs directly. The traffic on the link 
uh, bottleneck link will be 7m divided by 4 according to all reduced algorithm, where m represents the model size on each GPU. This traffic volume is too large for this link. Our solution addresses this problem using a technique called CPU assisted aggregation, and it contains several steps. First, it led the four GPUs under the same PCIe switch to perform a local reduced scatter operation so that each GPU will have a quarter of the aggregated gradients. Next, each GPU copies its quarter to the host memory. And now there are two co copies of complete gradients on the host memory and each from an individual NUMA node. So we need to sum up these two copies using CPUs. We can see that the traffic on bottleneck link is now only equals to M since we have avoided the cross NUMA GPU communication. And in the end, this CPU assisted aggregation can outperform MBI or Nikol by 34% in theory. And we also summarize the design principle for this topology that we need to avoid the direct copy between GPUs under different PCIe switches. There are more, also more details in the paper, such as the solution for NVLink based machines, the design principles for different topology, and the optimality analysis, and also the discussion about GPU direct RDMA. And please refer to the paper for more details. The third design point addressed the CPU bottleneck. We have mentioned that using CPU to run optimizers is inefficient. But since our design goal is to leverage the spare re CPU resources, we need a module that can run on CPU with high performance. Our solution is based on the observation that the optimizer function can actually be divided into two stages, the gradient summation followed by the parameter update stage. And while the latter is heavy for CPU, we find the gradient summation is actually CPU friendly. Now here's a figure showing the summation throughput on CPU. We use synthetic FP16 and FP32 tensors, which are two common data types for deep learning. We find that both of their summation throughput is much higher than the network bandwidth, meaning the CPU summation is faster than the network. With this finding, let's rethink the function placement of DNN chaining. For PS, it places the forward and backward propagation on GPUs, which is a common practice, but puts the entire optimizer, including the summation and update on CPUs. Our abstraction called summation service is different. While we do not change the forward and backward propagation, we move the parameter update, which is more computation intensive, to GPUs and keeps the much simpler summation in CPUs. This way, the summation service abstraction can address the CPU bottleneck efficiently. Then let's put three pieces together and show the overall system architecture. We have many machines and each, on each GPU machines, there is a module called communication service that can aggregate the gradients of the local GPUs. On each machine, there is also a module called summation service that runs on CPUs and can process the gradients from other GPU machines. And all these modules interact with others using the network communication. Among them, the communication service is responsible for intra-machine optimization when aggregating the local gradients. The summation service module can address the CPU bottleneck. And the network communication uses the optimal intermachine strategy to maximize the performance. As for usage, PyPS can support TensorFlow, PyTorch, and MSNet. It is also easy to use because it is compatible to most widely used APIs, including Horovod and native APIs for PyTorch and TensorFlow. We note that BIPS has been deployed in Bidons for many tasks such as computer vision and natural language processing. Next, we'll move on to the evaluation section. We evaluate our system using popular DNN models, including ResNet 15, VGG16, Ugate GAN, Transformer, Bert Large, and GPT2. The machines we use have AV100 GPUs, 
and a 100 gigabit NIC. The network is Rocket V2 with full bisection bandwidth. And the baseline we compare are Horovold, PyTorch DDP, native PS of TensorFlow and MSNet. And all of our experiments are performed on production clusters. And all chosen models are representative of production workloads. First, we test the intermachine communication. The figure on left shows the traffic micro benchmark on AGPU machines. We can see that BiPS can achieve near optimal communication performance. And the figure on right shows the end-to-end -end result on 64 GPUs using two models, uh, including GP2 and the Ugati GAN. We see that with more CPU machines, BiPS can achieve higher end-to-end -end performance. Next, we evaluate the intra-machine optimization. Uh, the figure on the left shows the result on PCIe-only machines. And for this topology, we have up to 30% gain. The figure on the right shows the result on ME link based machines. And for this topology, we have up to 80% gain. Finally, we, yeah, we evaluate the end-to-end -end scalability with up to 256 GPUs. We use different CV and NLP models implemented in TensorFlow, MSNet, and PyTorch. For each model, we run the experiments using 8 to 256 GPUs. And the results show that BiPS has gain for all cases. The more GPUs we use, the higher gain we will get. In summary, BiPS can outperform all reduced NPS by up to 84% and 245% respectively. We also analyze the breakdown of the performance gains. We compare the performance with native PS using four GPU machines and two CPU machines. We see that with intermachine optimization, we have 66% gain. And with intermachine optimization, the gain is 22% more. And with summation service, we have 80% more gain. Next, I would like to mention a few related work. The first dimension is communication acceleration. Some previous work proposes gradient compression and scheduling to accelerate the DNN training of communication. These work are complementary to BiPS, and actually we have integrated them as optional features in our system. Some researchers propose pipeline parallelism like PipeDream. BiPS can benefit PipeDream in the data parallel stage. There are also related work that propose hierarchical or reduce, such as Blue Connect. But essentially, it is still all reduced and cannot leverage heterogeneous resources. Another dimension is using new hardware or architecture for DNN training. For example, there are many new AI chips, such as TPU and Habana. And in fact, BiPS design is generic and can also apply to these chips. Some researchers um, re use new architecture, including using infinite band switch ASIC to perform in network or reduce, or using P4 switch to perform in network PS, and using a rest scale dedicated servers with multiple NICs to accelerate the communication. But they require special redesign of the hardware or architecture. And in our work, we focus on using more generally available devices. To conclude, BiPS is a unified system for distributed DNN training acceleration. It optimizes the intermachine and intramachine communication and addresses the CPU bottleneck with the submission service abstraction. It has been deployed in BiDance for many training tasks, including CV and NLP. It is, open, uh, it is also open sourced at GitHub. With that, I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you.